Rice and fish are some of the most important global food resources, contributing to the health and nutrition of billions, whilst providing the backbone of many national and local economies. To ensure food can be produced with sufficient quantity and quality to meet the demands of a growing population, a transformation in food production systems is required. Integrated agroecological practices offer a key opportunity for such transformation, utilising natural processes to develop food systems with improved water and land use that can provide resilient, nutritious and dietary diverse food resources whilst enhancing local livelihoods and minimising the environmental impact of food production. Rice fish systems are a key example of an agroecological practice where rice is cultivated in the same plot of land as naturally occurring or introduced fish populations, which are present either simultaneously or on rotation throughout the year. Rice fish systems provide farmers with a number of key benefits in comparison to monocropping. These include increased resource efficiency, higher net income, greater nutritional benefits, and a reduction in negative environmental impacts due to a reduced requirement for fertilizer input. However, in many areas, there are practical constraints in implementation, including initial investment costs, the requirement for year-round water availability, access to infrastructure, and the presence of an enabling policy landscape which supports land use change. So how do we evaluate if, when, and where rice fish systems should be implemented? Suitability mapping is a technique that has been developed to provide insight into the agroecological suitability of land, enabling priority areas to be identified that are best suited to and will most benefit from the implementation of a particular type of system. During the mapping process, geographical information systems are commonly used to synthesize large volumes of biophysical and socioeconomic data, enabling results to be displayed in a visual and readily interpretable format. Building on earlier work by IMI and IRI, WorldFish have developed a geospatial tool to model suitability for integrated, culture-based rice fish systems within Myanmar's Ayawadi Delta. The region is nationally recognised for its importance in terms of rice and fish production. However, high levels of poverty and malnutrition remain within rural communities. A conversion from monoculture to integrated rice fish systems may provide a key opportunity to tackle this. However, national policy is resistant to such a transformation. The production of regional level suitability maps alongside rice fish trial plots has revealed a land area of 15,716 km squared is suited to rice fish, with predicted benefits from 10% implementation, including a net income of over 268 million US dollars and an additional 1 times 10 to the 5 milligrams of edible fish portions within the region. To date, these results have supported a favourable shift in agricultural policy towards integrated production practices. However, further work is required to identify where rice fish systems should be implemented to best benefit rural communities at the local scale. This has been facilitated through the development of a decision support tool and accompanying user guides which enable rice fish suitability to be determined using a participatory modelling and scenario-based planning process. The tool has been developed with three key priorities in mind. Usability, accessibility and applicability. The tool uses open source software with clear and interpretable graphics that ensure results can be readily applied in the real world. Most importantly, the tool enables stakeholders to select from a menu of options by weighting the criteria that contribute to suitability based on local needs. This is particularly important in relation to socio-economic factors, enabling stakeholders to prioritise or place equal importance upon the goals of improved nutrition, income or employment. To understand how the decision support tool works, let's introduce you to our group of stakeholders. Here we have members from local government departments, small-scale farmers and fishers, and NGOs, who have come together to help determine priority areas for investment in the region. These stakeholders have a number of different priorities. The decision support tool provides a forum for participatory discussions that can account for each stakeholder's requirements in determining rice fish suitability. The first step requires stakeholders to develop an understanding of the criteria used in the model. This can be broken down into four categories. Hazards that may impact the system, including temperature increase, storms and flooding. System development, including available land area, access to infrastructure and the value chain. Biophysical characteristics, including elevation, 
soil and salinity levels and irrigated land area, and socioeconomic factors such as population demography, malnutrition, employment and poverty levels. The criteria were selected during participatory workshops comprising a variety of local and national stakeholders. The decision support tool enables you to explore each criterion in greater depth describing how and why each contributes to suitability and providing an insight into the data that will be used in the model. Once you've explored this criteria, you can move on to step two. This is where stakeholder input is required as we ask you to weight each criterion based on how important you perceive it to be in relation to suitability in your area, given local needs and aspirations. This step uses the analytic hierarchy process to calculate how each criteria interacts to contribute to overall suitability. All you have to do is decide which criteria is most important and by how much. Let's look at the value chain as an example. What do you believe is more important for suitability? The number of fish markets or the number of fertilizer and pesticide sellers? In that case, we give priority to that criterion. And how much more important are fish markets on a scale from one to nine? Okay, and there we have our answer. Now you have to repeat this step for each criterion within each component of the model until we obtain a final list of weightings for rice fish suitability. The decision support tool does the rest for you. You can move through the next stages to view the underlying calculations that make up the model, but in essence, the tool will use a process of multi-criteria evaluation to calculate suitability for each township within the region based on your weighting results. The results can be visualised within QGIS, clearly demonstrating how suitability varies and, if you want to delve deeper, why. As a result, decisions on where it's best to tailor and target investments to support a transition from monoculture to integrated farming can be made. This preliminary version of the decision support tool is in further development, with results from an economic viability analysis for the region to be incorporated in coming months. As a first step, this will enable a quantitative value to be attached to suitable land area, providing stakeholders with a clear cost-benefit analysis in relation to local income following a transformation in land use. Additionally, the tool is capable of supporting suitability analysis at a much broader scale for a variety of different production practices and commodities. Within the short term, this aims to be scaled out to other geographies and commodities within Myanmar and scaled up to a regional analysis of rice fish culture suitability, providing insight into the key opportunities and challenges for system implementation across the region. This will support a positive transition in food system transformation, with the decision support tool facilitating a focus on enhancing water and land use to provide regional populations with resilient, nutritious and sustainable food resources into the future.